Welcome to Culture Connect TV. I'm Audrey, I'm your host, and I'd like to welcome this evening uh, photographer Joe Blum. Welcome, Joe. Thank you, glad to be here. It's, thank you for coming, especially because you have a show opening next week at City Hall, San Francisco City Hall, of an amazing body of work. You are the documenter of the building of the Bay Bridge. The new east span of the Bay Bridge. And um, how long have you been working on that? I've, uh, I've been working on the Bay Bridge since uh, 1998, when they uh, took soil samples for test piles when they started the construction. Wow. So I've been out there for quite a while. That's pretty amazing. And, and the interesting thing is, I met you, we said, 18 years ago in the dark room at the uh, photo dark room at Harvey Milk. In Harvey Milk in the city, on <laughs> Scott Street. And um, you were, at that point, you were shooting film, but now you're shooting digital. And you're on the bridge with, we were talking about this, how much, how much equipment do you carry up to the bridge with you when you go? Well, we spoke about one day when, uh, I still sometimes shoot film, um, but I shoot much, much more digital. But we were talking about a day in which I brought out a medium format camera for a film camera with three lenses and a digital camera with three lenses. So that was a, a heavier day than usual. But uh, I usually bring, you know, two bodies, three lenses, four lenses, sorted other gear. And you're actually, I mean, from these pictures that we have here, you're actually, you're up there, way I, up there. My project has been to get as close as, I, I've been allowed, I've, I've had the, the privilege by the contractors and Caltrans and whoever else has been, you know, in charge of the bridge to, um, to get about as close to the work as possible without endangering myself or others. And, um, and the whole idea was to attempt to photograph the construction of this bridge from the perspective of the workers who are actually building it. And you're passionate about that because your, your background, your personal background is you were a boiler maker and you also were uh, working in that industry yourself for how long were you? Well, I did. I actually worked in heavy steel construction and I actually worked for American Bridge when it had a plant in South San Francisco and American Bridges is um, one of the contract is the, there's a the contract for the uh, self-anchored suspension bridge which is the piece that's being finished now um, is a joint venture between American Bridge and Fleur and um, so I actually worked for them uh, in the 1970s in South San Francisco at a fabrication shop and so not only were you a, an iron worker yourself no boiler maker. a boiler ma boiler maker sorry uh, you also bring to it your background in uh, kind of studying uh, labor and your background in studying social sciences. Right, at, at the university at, at uh, UC Berkeley and, um, and at San Francisco State, I did study um, work, labor processes and things like that and wrote about it some. And so when we were talking, you, you you were telling me that you're really focused on the workers, that that's the story that you want to tell in your photos. Correct. I think there'll be thousands. I know there are thousands. There'll be hundreds of thousands of pictures of the bridge and, and its setting and its natural beauty and the beauty of, of, of the structure. But my, my project has always been to, um, to show the work and how the work is accomplished and to do that, as I said, as close as possible from the perspective of those who are doing the work and when I couldn't do that to be pretty close and also to set them in a context. So, you know, the shot behind you is, um, I'm pretty close to that worker, but in the background is, you know, you're a Buena Island and the beautiful and beautiful San Francisco skyline. And uh, so it gives people an idea of, of those aspects. Let's take a look at some of your work. And, and you can talk about it as it comes up. I think we were talking about in the car, the, the idea of, the, uh, of the, um, the physical strength. I mean, everybody, it's, it comes as no surprise to people that to do this kind of work takes an extraordinary amount of physical strength. What I think is not recognized and stamina and things. And there's also a, a, a large, a, a large um, amount of cerebral work. There's, there's a lot of thought that goes behind the work. 
Thor comes out there, there's a, the engineers have sent out the idea that uh, how the work is to be organized, but everything changes when you get out there and have to deal with the elements. You have to take in the idea of, you know, these are geometric forms that people are, are messing with. They, they weigh a lot. They're subject to being turning into sails in the wind. They're slippery from getting wet in the dew, in the fog. The, the photo we're looking at here is, uh, is a worker working off a float. These are plywood, um, plywood floats wow. um, that, uh, w that are hold, held up by rope. The workers throw them over the side and climb down onto them. Um, here's a man at 150 feet, a gang of men, uh, connecting a temporary truss to a tower um, 150 feet in the air. I, I can't do that split on, 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 on the ground. He's got a 35-pound gun in his hand that tightening bolts on this tower. Um, as you can see, he has his fall protection, but he also has a uh, positioner hooks, which allows him to, to free up both of his hands so that he can, that he can work. This is a photo of inside the, uh, the foundation of the, uh, of the uh, tower. The, this bridge is in a unique bridge, a single uh, self-anchored suspension bridge with a single 525-foot tower. And this is putting uh, heavy rebar in the, uh, in the uh, foundation of that tower. And here again was cerebral work. He's measuring and putting where it is. And you talked about the crew and you were saying that, because um, I thought, you know, what type of people would they have to, how do they find the people to go into this crew? Right. Well, I mean, a lot we were looking at, at, at iron workers, but there's also pile drivers and electricians and laborers and co concrete workers and carpenters and many other crafts. But we were speaking a little bit about the iron workers gang, and it's an apprentice craft in that you are an apprentice for four years before you become a journeyman, journey person. They're all women, and unlike the, when they built the original bridge, they're all women and there are people of color, which was perhaps not common, which was, did not exist when the bridge was originally made. Um, but the gangs are made up of a foreman who's really in charge. Um, and so he has, a, he has a dual role of both supervising the work. Um, and uh, this is the tower leg being lowered onto um, the rods. Um, um, so <laughs> those white bands on the top were, uh, are, are just so that uh, the threads on the, on, the, uh, on the rods would not be damaged as this 1150-ton uh, uh, tower shaft is being lowered onto these rods. Um, this is uh, two iron workers hooking up the, um, the saddle that went on the top, that goes on the top of the bridge. And there's a single saddle in the core, uh, since it's a single self-anchoring suspension bridge, the, the, um, um, the cable passes over it twice. Wow. Um, so it is, I believe, the largest saddle on a, uh, on a uh, suspension bridge in the world. Um, but the amazing thing is, the, 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 here's an example of what you were talking about, the, 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 the strength and the stamina. I mean, that pin that he's pulling out of there weighs two, three hundred pounds. And, you, you know, you don't want to drop it on your foot. And the plate that, that's going to come loose when he gets it out of that shackle is, is also going to go all sorts of places. So my thing was to spend a lot of time with them as they would go through these work processes, and, um, which I think is quite fascinating. The, the strands for the main cable, there's 137 strands, and each one of those strands has 127 wires in it, so there's just short of 18,000 wires that holds up the, uh, uh, that make up the main cable, and he's inside the chamber getting one of the strands into position. And you, you actually know these guys, like you've been working up there for five years, or you've been well, shooting this? Well, I've been out there for, you know, probably longer than a lot of people who've, you know, who, who've come and gone. And so, you know, uh, you know, some I know a lot better than others, and, and uh, they all have looked out for me and, uh, uh, you know, cared for my well-being and told me sometimes, uh, we don't think you ought to be right there, Joe, and, and things like that. That shot's in the middle of the night, like four o'clock in the morning, because the cable has to be, uh, it has to be in an exact position, and his, uh, the surveyor with the uh, calipers measuring it, and it has to be done in the middle of the night so that you get an ambient temperature. When, the, when, uh, when metal heats up, it expands, and they, they want to measure it at, uh, at a, at when it's still.
and when they have an ambient temperature in the 30s or 40s. This is cutting uh, heavy pipe for false work. There's a lot of false work. When you put up concrete and other structures, you have to, um, you have, to um, have something that will support it until you get the forms and the concrete poured, and then the false work has to be removed. And removing false work is a dangerous task, and that's they're now removing the last of the false work on the bridge. Wow. Um, and it's, so there's a construction job as well as a deconstruction job. This is a painter with, uh, you know, protective gear. Um, this is just a, uh, you know, an everyday occurrence. This is a couple of pile drivers on Yerba Buena Island hooking up a, a pile driving hammer, but it's amazing the intensity and, and uh, the placement of the feet and the uh, ability to cooperate and, and get this shackle and the pin into the shackle so that this thing can be lifted by the crane. That's one down in the foundation, welding studs to the, the wall. This is a woman uh, surveyor who's um, giving instructions to, uh, who is uh, reading uh, um, the position of this piece and she is guiding them to where they're gonna place the truss. So let's come back and, and talk a little bit yeah. <clears throat> about you know, how this experience has changed your life or how you, you know. Well, I've become a troll that lives on the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have a nickname for I'm, you on the bridge? I'm sure there's, um, <laughs> I know I'm, 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 everything is good as long as they don't start calling me Mr. Blum. So <laughs> as long as we, you know, we joke around and, uh, and people tolerate me, it's, uh, and it's good. You talked about, this is really interesting to me. It's like you said, this is a, a handmade yes, bridge. Yes, and I think you could see from some of the photos that was showing. I mean, the one that's behind you now, that's, um, or behind me. I mean, he's, they're operating these pieces of equipment. There is equipment, obviously, and for the big picks, obviously there's huge cranes and there's jacks and there's all sorts of mechanical things, but um, every bolt, um, every uh, strand, is grabbed by hands. The twist is taken out of it with hands and hand tools. Um, to fit the pieces together, you drive pins to line up the pins so you can put bolts in them. And once you get the bolts in them, you stuff the bolts by hand. And you put the washer and the nuts on. And then you get a, a hand tool and you tighten them. So yes, it's the, 20 it's, you know, the first decade of the 21st century. and. Um, the project manager, early on in the, in the job, I was standing there and we had one of the pictures up of them driving pins and he said to me, you know, when it all comes, I don't care if it's early in the 21st century, it all comes down to an iron worker with a 10, eight or a 10 pound hammer beating on pins to line up the, the plates. And it's true. Um, so yes, it is a, a hand, it is a hand job. And you know, the, the fact that you're able to, you know, document these pictures and you have you bring such heart to it because you've done this type of work. I mean, you, you've you've been you know as a boiler maker. Right. Just to be clear, I have I I, I have not walked out on. As right, I say, not, I'm not walking out on the cables and doing what they're doing. But I have done I have done similar work and I have an idea of it. And then I paid a lot. I've gotten a lot of help and I paid a lot of attention. People have been very good to me. Caltrans inspectors who are out there on the job all the time and. Um, um, the uh, general superintendent's uh, chief engineer, a woman, has been just fabulous to let me know, and she will tell me we're going to do a certain thing. And, and for some of the photos I really wanted, some of the things are repeated three or four times, and I had a very definite idea that I wanted to shoot which one I wanted to shoot. Um, and I would sort of pre-figure pre out where I wanted to be and how to do it. Because once it's done, it's done. I mean, they do it, and there's no, um, they don't do it over if Joe didn't get a good photograph. Um, or he forgot to put the film in, or forgot to, you know, turn the camera on. Um, so, um, so I could control what I wanted as, to some degree where the background was going to be when I knew what the process was. You cannot control the weather, and you cannot control the light. So sometimes they'd be putting something in at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on the west side. Not good. You're shooting into the sun. Um, and then days you'd get lucky, and there'd be cloud cover, or they'd be doing it earlier in the day. But... That's construction. The things happen when it happens. The one behind us in, is in dense fog. Um, it adds something to the thing, but that's the conditions. That, so 
it's not something that you get to choose. Well, um, let's take a look at some more pictures okay. and, and see <coughs> what's coming up. Oh, this is one of my favorite. This, this, this was a job that I was talking about in which I did really figure out much more about the, the work process. So now all the cable is in the bridge and they are, uh, and, and it's all been bound together, but it, now it needs to be compacted. It's in, not in a cylindrical shape. This piece is going to be that weighs 35,000 pounds and has that pin sticking out there and it's like an open donut. It's going to be wrapped around the 137 strands of the cable and inside of its frame it's got jacks and it's going to, once they get it wrapped around that, they're going to put the pin together and it'll be together. And uh, that's the iron worker foreman Tony Costa who has got a gang of five or six people and he's got to make sure that not none of that touches a single one of the strands on the cable. And um, so they have to get this thing around the cable and um, into position. And it took them 56 minutes and I ran back and forth on the catwalk trying to get the pictures. Sometimes it was a good move and sometimes I was better off where I had been before. Wow. This is a historic shot, because, and it's the one that I use for the postcard for the exhibit. Um, it's the very first, uh, he's, this is, uh, this is the, the iron worker foreman, Tony Castron, uh, erecting gang foreman on the top of the uh, saddle at about 520 feet, something around there. And this is, this is a, the first cable strand being hauled up to the top of the cable. So this is the first wow. strand that's going to pass over um, the saddle. Um, that's a picture of the left coast lifter picking up a 1,200 ton truss. You know, if you have a larger version of it, you can see how small the workers are. Um, that's the first section. That's the first um, deck section wow. of the self-anchored suspension bridge being unhooked from the uh, crane. This is a shot out of the Favco crane, which was a smaller crane that's, that allowed the iron workers to build temporary, temporary work. And I climbed up one day. This is the time we were talking about with both cameras, both the film and the other, and climbed 180 feet up a rung ladder and got this in, these incredible shots of, um, I was finally got up above, above the iron workers and shot down on them, so that was kind of fun. This is the one we've seen before. It's putting a cable band. Once, that, once the cable was put into a cylindrical shape, it was bound together, and then they put cable bands to hang the suspender ropes off of, wow. and they are pulling that in there. This was construction of the tower. Um, the tower was constructed of uh, four separate lifts of tower shafts, um, and then a grillage and a saddle on the top, and then some other smaller stuff on the top of that. But each one of these things was uh, picked up. These are guys um, out on uh, platforms um, uh, adjusting uh, suspender ropes. Wow. And that's the old bridge on the right and the skyway portion of the bridge on the left. It almost looks like there, there's some kind of choreography going on. Yeah, there's on. a lot of choreography out there. I've been associated with this dance group, um, um, a Flyaway Productions, which does dances, and uh, they, um, uh, I think very much of the way that the dances in Flyaway fly around, and these guys, I think, are like a good match for them. This is the Ironworks taking, uh, uh, unhooking the, uh, the lifting devices um, from one of those tower shafts. I think this was the second lift, so they're only up. This is part of the Tower Foundation uh, shear plates that I believe this is maybe the first piece that went in around the tower before, uh, before the shafts went in. And we seem to see that picture a lot. <laughs> Jake is in this picture. We, we get many runs of oh, Jake. Oh, here's a new one. <laughs> oh, that was in the fog when they were building the bypass. You know, they had a, you know, since the... Uh, the footprint of the new bridge is very similar and has to go through the existing tunnel. Uh, there had to be a way of routing traffic around that as they built towards that. And this was, this was work in the fog um, of building the bypass. Uh, once they got the, uh, the, the uh, lifting devices off of that, uh, the, the uh, shackles and stuff off of that, then there were these plates that were used as lifting devices, so they had to go out and work off the floats again and take all the bolts out of that, and then they would take those pieces off so that they could be used on the next shaft. This is a view from the top of the, uh, this is looking down on the top of the, uh, of the tower saddle. Um, and so as I said to you before, uh, the ca cable passes through, and you can see the, the uh, the cable 
going off north and uh, east and west. Um, there's an example of hand work. He's taking the twist out of one of the wow. cable strands with, uh, with hand tools and a sleever bar and as much weight and strength and, as he can put on it. But that's a single strand of 127 wires, and above him are ones that have already been put in, and this is the one that's being put in now. This is early on before there was any self-anchored self suspension bridge. This is the foundation um, that they called E2, which is the, uh, the eastern end of the self-anchored suspension bridge. And this is early on in pouring concrete from a barge, um, from a concrete barge. Um, this is laborers carrying uh, um, anti-corrosion paste in cans down the uh, foot, foot bridge oh. in the fog in the old bridge in the background. This is way back. This is, uh, one of the, this is the first pile um, for the foundation of the, uh, um, for the tower being lifted up at dawn. Um, this is an iron worker um, working on, um, on the top of, a, of the um, suspender battery. Um, they're putting in suspender ropes, and he had to make an adjustment off the high line. Um, and, you know, the Golden Gate Bridge and stuff is in the background. Actually, it's... So it's, for me, like, this body of work that you're doing or the, the process of you shooting, like, this is your own project. You're not being paid. Correct. This is, like, your Correct. passion. I have, I, have sold, I have sold along the line. I have sold some, some of the photographs. But, no, I'm not paid. Um, um, that and to me is remarkable because, <laughs> I mean, you are doing this to, to document kind of, I want to say, your fellow workers. Uh, yes, absolutely. I yeah. mean, it's coming from a place that's really pure and you can tell that you're, you know, you're, you are, even though you're not doing that kind of work, you're working along with them to help capture every... Oh, yeah, I know. I would not deny that it's been work to do this and, uh, and to... Um... There's been a lot of climbing, and there's been a lot of carrying, and there's been climbing down into places and tying off and, and doing things like that. But I think the point that you're making is really true, that, uh, that um, we take for granted these, these built structures that we depend on, whether it be a freeway or a, you know, a high-rise building or something like that. And, and for the last, you know, I guess it's going on 30 years or something now, I've been, um, I've been photographing that kind of work ever since... Um, I started doing it while I was the uh, dispatcher and assistant business agent for the, for the, pi for the boiler makers. I went out and started going around to our shops, and then I went back to the shipyards where I had worked. Um, so I started shooting shipyard work and forge work, and, um, and then through the auspices of the Labor Archives of San Francisco State and Lynn Bonfield, I got hooked up with the iron workers, and uh, I photographed the high rises, uh, the Four Seasons Hotel and Tower on. Uh, on Market Street and some other buildings on Mission Street, and um, all of these things that we take for granted. Um, you, the idea to get behind the scene and to be able to show people behind the scene the work it takes to to put these things up, um, has been my project, and it's been lots of fun too. And do you have <laughs> like one quick like special moment when you were on the bridge that you'd like to share? No, I, you know, I really don't have a, you know, I mean. It's got every moment has to well, be. Well, yes, you, because you could be, a, it could be a, a, the, the most mundane day in which, you know, I mean, there are these milestone days. The one of the cable being put in, it was a milestone day, but it was, to me, it is no more. Because um, it's every little piece makes the whole, so. Yeah, and I think I even enjoyed it more when they're, you know, that the milestones would, you know, there would be attention to the milestones and there would be other people and they'd be jostling sometimes and all those kinds of things and for me um, I preferred it when it was just the workers doing their work and right. and trying to think well nobody's here but Joe and <laughs> that's that's fine because and so yeah. I mean like you really are like the witness to the building of the bridge I guess I've, I've seen quite a bit of it go up there's, there's no doubt about that 
Well, and your show opens at... Uh, San well, it's already Francisco. open at San Francisco, uh, San, San Francisco City Hall at the uh, San Francisco Arts Commission Gallery, which is on the ground floor, and there is 85 24 by 36 uh, images, uh, digital images, so they're all, um, they're all color. And it opened on June 24th, um, and it'll run through September 27th, and it will probably move to the East Bay, to the Metropolitan Transportation Commission after that. And a second show will open August 3rd um, at the Harvey Milk Photo Center, where we met and did our work, um, which will be 50 black and whites that will be oh. earlier and will concentrate not quite as large, 11 by 14s and 1620s, but will concentrate on the foundation work and the Skyway, oh. um, maybe uh, that ended in 2000, I don't know, the last one was 2000 five or six, something, something around there. Well, Joe, this is, it's tremendous that you came and, and told us your story and you shared their story in the building of the bridge, yeah. uh, the bridge builders. And, That's what it's uh, about. It's about the bridge. It's about them. It's about them. Yeah. Thank Absolutely. you so much. Thank you. It was and a pleasure. We look forward to having you come and when the bridge is completed and yeah. Good. show us some more images. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Because they're going to have